The year is 2016, the year I started playing Roblox in the year of the US presidential election. A game in the name of Phantom Forces pops up on the front page in the popular section. This game would be the first FPS shooter game I would ever play. So, as a normal person, I thought I might as well wait make a video on it. Considering the fact that this game is constantly evolving and... Oh, but who cares. Starting off in the main menu screen, we have Deploy, Squad Deploy, Weapon Loadout, Case Inventory, Customize, Buy Credits, and Settings. On the bottom of the screens, it shows your current player stats, which I will censor because it is very amusing. Pressing deploy would just deploy you in a random spawn in the map. Squad deploy allows you to spawn a new teammate, which is both good and bad, considering that you can get to the front lines as quickly as possible, but the chances of you dying the second you spawn is very high. In the weapon loadout section, you can select your weapon types for over a million weapon types, such as assault rifles, battle rifles, carbines, shotguns, DMRs, BDWs, sniper rifles, pistols, machine pistols. Okay, big. My weapon of choice would be my transgender HK460. The attachment sections would let you customize your gun with a set of parts such as optics, barrel, underbarrel, other, and ammo types, which I will not go into too much detail since it would be pretty self-explanatory. The case inventory section shows you all the weapon skin cases that you own which you would have to open with a designated key. Each skin case has a rarity which vary from common, uncommon, rare, very rare, and legendary. Legendary drops some kind of melee weapon that you can unlock. I wouldn't go too much into weapon skins, but skins with a slash customization on the side would allow you to change the color of the skin. Customize is pretty useless at the moment. Buy credits would let you buy more in-game credits with Robux, and settings would let you change your settings such as enable blood, enable kill feed, enable shaders, etc. We gotta There are 7 game modes in the game, 6 that are available to everyone in public servers, and 1 that are only available in VIP servers. The main 6 game modes are Team Deathmatch, Flare Domination, King of the Hill, Kill Confirmed, Capture the Flag, and Hardpoint. Team Deathmatch has no other objective than to kill the enemy team. Each match ends with 15 minutes or until a team reaches a total of 200 kills. King of the Hill is an objective based game mode essentially to hold the point in the middle of the map. Each team starts with 600 points and depending on how many players are on the hill, will affect how many points would be drained from the enemy team. For example, no players would only drain 5 points per 10 seconds, one player would drain 10 points per 10 seconds, increasing by 10 per person with a limit of 3 players being able to remain on the hill, making 3 players drain 30 points per 10 seconds, and also one kill will remove one point from the enemy team. Flare Domination is King of the Hill but with 3 points, and also instead of draining 600 points you earn points. These capture points give out points at a consistent amount and the more points your team has capped, the more points you earn. You can also decapture an enemy point and capture it. Each death would subtract one point from your team, and a flare round of Flare Domination will last 15 minutes or until a team reaches a total of 250 points. Kill confirmed is a team deathmatch with a change in some objectives. Players must collect the glowing dog tags of the enemies that they kill in order to score for their team. You can also deny the enemy players from collecting dog tags by collecting your dead allies' dog tags. A round of kill confirmed is also either 15 minutes or if the team collects a total of 150 kills. Hardpoint is an objective based game mode with a mix of both flare domination and king of the hill. The location of the point changes every minute. But in order to keep control of the point, you must have a player standing for the whole time, otherwise your team will not gain any points. For each player standing on the point gains 1 point, there is no way to reduce the number of points the enemy had made. Capture the Flag is a pretty self-explanatory game mode. You capture the enemy flag and bring it back to your own base. But the thing is that even if you had captured an enemy flag and successfully went back to base, if your flag was stolen from the enemy team, you cannot claim the enemy team's flag. Each capture the flag match is 10 minutes or until a team captures 5 flags. 
The one game mode not available in public servers is Gun Game. The game gives you a different set of weapons for each kill. And blah blah blah, this game mode is really boring in my opinion, so it's gonna, it can last up to uh, hours. Uh, the person's uh, second to last kill will be a Golden Zip 22, and for the last kill will be their current melee weapon. The actual gameplay itself is like your normal first person shooter game. You can shoot enemies, aim down your sights on like CSGO. I mean, I would recommend this game to CSGO players because the bullets actually go where you're aiming at. This game can make you frustrated at times since it is a FPS game, and there's ser some seriously good players out there, not even joking. The guns itself are pretty well modeled, each having their own animations and gun sounds. Recoil exists in this game and you only have a limited ammo count depending on your weapon. There are some overpowered weapons in the game which really just makes the game less fun in general, which I will talk about later. Phantom Forces is sort of a mixed bag for me. The gameplay is honestly pretty enjoyable because of the sheer amount of variety of game modes and maps and their guns, each having their own advantages and disadvantages. The game is well developed and I haven't really found any major bugs while playing it, but I want to focus on here is more into detail, like the guns, how they are balanced. In Final Forces, you can buy the guns before even unlocking the weapon itself, and people that are only rank 30, they can get their hands on like rank 80 to 1000 plus guns, and these players would gladly spend their money on really OP weapons such as the C7A2, A12, HK416, BFG50, and M107, there's a lot more. But one of the honestly worst addition to the game is the Ballistic Tracker. For those who don't know the Ballistic Tracker, is um, it can spot enemies through your gun sight, technically making it aimbot without shooting. Despite having a very cool spot function that can basically spot enemy players behind a wall that you probably couldn't see with the little press of the button E on your keyboard. It's really just an awful time constantly dealing with these kind of players, especially when they have such an awful KDR with a, such a good weapon. It's honestly crazy. The other problem is the community problem which is out of the devs control so there's really nothing to blame anything to them. The community is absolutely toxic, players constantly saying that somebody's a noob, that their team is bad, and fat shaming others, calling someone a hacker just because they killed them, calling each other kid and vote kicking people just for using a machine gun in a sniper map. In a summary, Phantom Forces is a well-developed game. It really just comes to those details when you see the problems come up. Gameplay isn't awful, the gun scripts are honestly one of the best in Roblox. It is a game that still has a lot more things the devs could add, but I think it will also be a good time to move on since it's almost 6 years of release. But as of 2021, Phantom Forces is good as it is. Thank you very much for watching. I would also want to know your opinion on Phantom Forces. But as of now, see you next time.